Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Marvel Snap. Today we will be looking at Scar. As the votes are in, put a post up on YouTube the other day, we're going to continue with some more card reviews. And the most important one will be coming out in the next couple days, which is the new season pass card, Scar, which is six power, excuse me, six power, six energy, 11 power Scar, which is, if you don't know for reference, Hulk's son. The description is, cost two less for each of your cards that has 10 or more power. So that is a very interesting ability, very similar to She-Hulk's in return as what she does is every turn you skip with the energy you have is how much power, or how much energy she deducts to her power to play. So it is a very interesting card. I've got two deck ideas I have to work around with Scar and I'm really looking forward to see how this turns out. This is a season pass I'm definitely going to get and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that later on too. A six power, 11, <coughs> excuse me, I said it again. Six energy, 11 power card. Let's see how this will work in the meta of next month of January, coming up in the next couple of days. And also, happy new year to everyone watching. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas as well and happy holidays. So let's get straight into it. Let's move on to the deck ideas. So what this actually means, oh god, of course I pressed the button. So what this means by cost two less for each of your cards that you have here, uh, sorry, <coughs> each of your cards that has 10 or more power, this does not include cards in your hand and or deck. This is only cards on the field, so keep that in mind. It costs two less for each of your cards that has 10 or more power. I have read an article on this online. Presumably it means only on the field. So wherever they are, deck, wherever you get them from, they have to be in play. Otherwise this does not count. So seems very interesting how that's gonna work. And it releases on January the 2nd of 2024. So let's get straight into deck guide, excuse me, a deck look and to see which ideas I have brewing for now. I did have a quick look online with a few different decks, but I found the most comfortable ones I may look at first are these two, which I'll just show you right now. Let's get straight into it. Scar Jaw, which is the Thor. Thor, Lockjaw, and Lady Jane Foster deck, which you can use if you want. These other cards are put in here as for other deck ideas. This is not the full deck the way I want it, but this is a variation of two decks in one. I do have another full deck I will show in just a moment, but this is just a mashup of different ideas I'm brewing with here. So what we got is the classic Lockjaw and Wasp combination. Now what I've added here is, yes, there is a Typhoid Mary. I will not be using this in this deck. The deck that could use Scar as well, which could be a, what do you call it? Red Skull Sauron. Red Skull Sauron deck could possibly be a good one for that deck. You can always get Typhoid Mary out, possibly turn three. You can always maybe throw in a Zabu if you're very keen and RNG worthy. <laughs> Just watch out for not getting Sauron. That's the main reason why Typhoid Mary is in this deck. Now, Blob is in the main consistency of the Blob, Lockjaw, Thanos type of deck. So this deck mainly consists of the Thanos, Lockjaw, mixed of Thor, and Lady Jane Foster. Now, you do not have to have all those three Wombo combos in one. You can easily take out Thor and Lady Jane if you wish and chuck in other big cards or just chuck in Iceman or even another two cost card if you need to. But in terms of power, the Blob is the main reason why Lady Jane, Thor, and some of the other cards like Vision, Dr. Octopus just to clog up a lane because you could always get a lucky Lockjaw into Dr. Octopus, which could generally possibly help out. You could also start off with Thanos with the Mind Stone into Lockjaw, or you could even switch out Thor for a Killmonger if you really want to for your stones. That is a good possibility too. You don't have to have the Thor Lady Jane Foster deck. 
Killmonger is a very good, very good replacement for this deck. The other cards that fit well with this, just in case you don't draw Scar, Magneto, Giganto, and the Infonaut, obviously to proc the Blob. If you don't have Blob, you can easily put in another card, which will be another six cost card like the Hulk, or even She-Hulk if you want to. They generally will be transported out, hopefully, with the Infinity Stones, which will pull out Magneto, Giganto, Infernal Vision is a very good second close one, and either Thor or Lady Jane pulling out Thor's hammer, which will in turn make Thor into a 310. Now, I do not know if that will proc Scar's energy link where he turns into a 10 cost card. That's the only description. I'm not sure if it will change. If it goes above 10 power, if you've already played it on the field, or you have to play a 10 power card, which we'll find out in the future. So that'll be an interesting mechanic to find out. So in short, I think this deck will work well with Scar in regards to if you draw him early and you also put the Infinity Stones into Lockjaw himself with the Wasp, of course. But Lockjaw with the Infinity Stones will generally be a good early turn to get all the big guys out. Now, you've got to keep in mind Shang-Chi and... What's his name? Shadow King? Shadow King are a thing. So even with these high-cost cards, you've got to make sure you watch out for those. So in turn, early turns, make sure you do the Infinity Stones. Mid-turns, try and see if you can get the Thor and or Infinity Stone into Lockjaw. If you draw the Blob, that is fine. But make sure you use the Time Stone to pull out Blob early on turn 5 and then maybe do a Magneto if everything works out well until another lane. Depending on the locations and depending on how the game goes. But in short, this deck I feel will work out pretty well with the replacements of your choice. This is just, again, a fresh look at a bunch of different cards. Maybe two or three that could easily be changed which were Thor, Typhoid Mary, and Lady Jane Foster. So with that, I'm happy to say this deck will hopefully shine. We will see. Until the card's released, we will see how this deck goes. So we will now move on to deck number two. Okay, this deck I've been looking forward to for a while because I've played this in the past. This is Scar High Evo. So, if you haven't played this deck before, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Basically how this works, on turn one, you've got your Sunspot and the Nebula. Play them early on with armor. Also, if you want to do three one-cost cards, which will be the Misty Knight, Misty Knight and the Sunspot work well on turns one and turn two. But if you only draw armor and Sunspot, always put them in the same lane. Moving to turn two, if you get Shocker and you get either She-Hulk or Hulk, proc them onto the left side, they get reduction of cost. Moving on to turn three, this is the best turn three to four play you could get. Well, three to five, depending on what's in your hand. And that way you can play Moon Girl. If you have this in your hand, that is She-Hulk and Hulk, but you always want to get the double She-Hulk play. So if you get that in regards to moving on to turn six, you play a double She-Hulk, then if you play a double She-Hulk with Scar, now Scar will go straight down from a six cost card into a five, four, three, two. That's right, a two, 11 cost card. So if emergency happens, you don't draw the Hulk. Big daddy boy Hulk, you can always draw the sun, Mr. Scar. Again, you've got the Cyclops and you've got the other reduction cards which work well with this deck. So Cyclops is another good card to try and get advantage on the one lane while you smash out the other lanes. That is also where armor comes in well against Shang-Chi. So Scar in this type of deck, this is another test, I would say. Another way to revise how Scar would work in a high evolutionary deck. I believe he has potential. Whether it works in the long term on the, how the meta shifts, entirely depends on if they change the card in the future. 
So this may be a potential deck for now, but moving on into the future, I cannot guarantee that. I'm honestly only suggesting this because I find it one of the most fun, in my opinion. And the other deck which I was talking about, which was the Lockjaw variation, I find RNG a bit of fun because you don't know what's going to come out. <laughs> can be fun, can be frustrating, but overall, very, very satisfying. So, let's move back to Scar. Okay, so, Scar. I believe he will be a fun card to play while he comes out in the new season pass. I believe it'll be a fun card to mash up with the other Hulks if you want to go into the Go Green team. If you want to mash up with the big Brutes, you could always add Thing into the High Evolutionary deck if you want to beat the big old Brutes out. But overall, I think it's going to be a fun card. Whether it's a bit overpowered or not, we will see. But overall, I I'd give it a, a pretty good score, to be honest. I say it's above average, and I'm looking forward to see what potential Scar has in the future. Thank you again for watching this video. I highly appreciate it, and hopefully you all have had a wonderful new year as far, and hopefully the rest of this first study year turns out very well. Have a good one, guys. Peace.